Hi Scorpio, this is your horoscope for September 2023. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to look at what the planets are doing this month and how they're going to influence you. What immediately kind of drew my attention is that at the beginning of the month here in September, the rising sign, the transiting rising sign, is in Scorpio in your first house. So you're going to feel very much yourself. You're going to feel empowered and like you can show up authentically. You don't need to kind of affect yourself or put on some sort of fake persona and until the middle of the month you're going to be very comfortable in your own skin and um, on the 16th of september that moves into sagittarius and it goes into your second house so you're going to go away from this this appreciation of self so to speak and you become more interested in new adventures that you can take which impact your finances and your practical circumstances in a positive way on the 3rd of september we have Venus, the planet of love and beauty and creativity, that goes direct. It's been in retrograde um, and with it going direct, it becomes much easier again to start new businesses, to pursue things that you love and to make a commitment to something that you're not 100% clear on, but that has the potential to really bring love into your life. Anything you're interested in, basically. Venus is also in Leo. So in, v in Leo, Venus is really on fire and she's really interested in putting herself in positions where she can shine. Um, she wants to have experiences which are not subtle, which are thrilling and life-affirming and loud and um, enjoyable. And at 12 degrees, that's three, one and two is three, that's communication and new beginnings. All of that happens in your 10th house. So at the beginning of the month here, you get fabulous new ideas about what you could do in your working life on your own. So particularly people who are thinking of going self-employed, pay attention to the kind of mental images you're getting at the beginning of the month here these are genuine ideas that you can run with that eventually would then put you in a position of being in the spotlight in the public eye in a position of leadership so if you have any desire to kind of do that to put yourself in that position venus sits in your 10th house all month and it keeps giving you the ideas about what could be so it's got nothing to do with what's happening right now but what you could create on your own in future on the 4th of December, Jupiter, the lucky planet, that goes retrograde until the end of the year, until the 30th of December. Jupiter sits in your 7th house of relationships and it's at 15 degrees in Taurus. So you're start going to start getting ideas now similar to Venus and Leo in your 9th saying this is what you could, sorry, in your 10th, saying this is what you could achieve in your working life, in your career. Venus in Leo is in your 10th, I keep going back to Leo, but Jupiter in your 7th, in retrograde, will say, this is what you could manifest and this is what you create, can create in your home life, in your relationships, in your romantic relationships, and this is how you can create more stability and more activity in that area. So that's a very roundabout way of saying, if you're single, and if you're looking for a relationship, Jupiter, the lucky planet, is going to guide you in the di right direction so that you can manifest those desires in earnest. So if you're a Scorpio who's single, September is great, but really Jupiter is in retrograde until the 30th of December. So the next four months are really going to be amazing when it comes to ideas around how can I change my relationship status? How can I build the home that I want? How can I build uh, an everyday kind of experience that includes someone I love and who I want to be with? Wow. So you're like, a, you're living a lot in your own feelings and in your own head and really considering what could be in future. So that's an important process. I mean, no one else can validate that for you. But if you find yourself a little bit more... Um, prone to daydreaming or considering what could be or not being as focused, then don't try and immediately overcome that. Look into what those dreams are giving you and the answers they're kind of handing to you on a silver platter and accept those and see what you can do about them because they're not just there to offer an escape or to alleviate boredom. These are good plans that you can implement in future. On the 14th of um, September, we have a new moon in Virgo and that happens in your 11th house of hopes and dreams. So you know, now become very um, astute and critical when it comes to, again, the future and what you want to 
experience in your life. So, Scorpio, I think you really have very little interest in real life here in September. You exist in your own little bubble. What are my hopes and dreams? What can I create in my working life? What can I create in my love life? It's all like this inner process of, of um, deciding what's important to you. It kind of reminds me of the Seven of Cups in the Tarot, where this blacked out figure is looking at a cloud filled with cups, and in each cup is a different desire like wealth or security or love or power or wisdom or whatever it may be. And it's very difficult to decide which one is right. So with that Mercury in retrograde, new moon in Virgo, I know that's a lot, <laughs> but Mercury, the communication planet, the planet that rules Virgo, is in retrograde until the 15th, until the day after this new moon, right? So the gift of Mercury retrograde is that you're able to see things differently. And the new moon happens on the last day of this retrograde. So use the last day of the retrograde to say, hmm, what could happen? And what other options am I willing to consider? Things that I usually would dismiss as nonsense or fluff or impractical. Look at those and pay attention. The next day when Mercury does go direct on the 15th, it's also in your 11th house of hopes and dreams. So you've now done the kind of spiritual bubble, I live in my own little fantasy world research. And with Mercury going direct, you're able to hit the ground running. You're able to plan how you can manifest these things in earnest, how you can connect with other people to get this done, and how it relates to your relationships and your, and your working life. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, so during the middle of the month, you may feel like you're working with an incredible amount of information. And it's like, it may... Um, you may not find yourself being particularly practical because you are so distracted by all this stuff going on internally. Moving on to the 19th of September, we have the Sun still in Virgo and that now forms an opposition with Neptune in Pisces at 26 degrees in your fifth house of what you love. Neptune is the dream planet, right? So it allows you to really um, see what your hopes and dreams are. So it supports the sun and your transiting midheaven and Mercury in your 11th, who are all trying to make meaning out of what's going on internally. And with the sun and Neptune opposition, that work becomes very, very simple because Neptune makes it very clear to you what you love. So I wouldn't sweat it so much with that said, up until the 19th of September, I would just take it easy and um, remind myself that it's okay not to have all the answers and that not to have everything figured out. Because around the 19th and I would say the 18th, 19th and 20th, specifically for you guys Scorpios, you'll have some sort of experience where everything makes sense. And you know that image of the seven of cups I mentioned earlier, where it's like I've got seven dreams, but I don't know which one to pick. Around this time of the month, it'll become very easy to say, this is my top priority. This is what's most important to me. So Neptune really helps you out. And then Saturn sits on your IC, also in your fifth house. Um, no, not on the IC, excuse me, I said that wrong. At, at the cusp of your fifth house, at the beginning of the fifth house, at two degrees, each house has 30 degrees, right? So it's at the very edge of that fifth house. And Saturn is about structure and security and having a foundation on which you can build. So altogether, this clarity, this, this ability to pick what's most important, it's a place of spiritual certainty. And if you can take some time off to kind of go through this whole process, that time of the month, 18th, 19th and 20th, I think is best for you to have the most um, insight. Excuse me, on the 23rd of September, we have the autumn equinox happening. So the beginning of autumn, and it's when um, there's an equal amount of daylight and nighttime, light and dark. So it's real balance. At this time, you still got Saturn and Neptune in your fifth, making it clear of what you love. And then you have Jupiter in retrograde and Uranus in retrograde in Taurus in your seventh. So again, you're willing to um, accept ideas and notions which seem impractical and which you've never considered before and you have the courage to actually then do something with them. On the 29th of September we have a supermoon happening that's a full moon in Aries 
And that happens for you guys, Scorpio, in your sixth house of work and daily routine and structure. Chiron, the wounded healer, is also in Aries in your sixth house. So now it's about um, using your practical energy and all this, this um, research that you've been doing to take action moving into October that says I'm now going to independently build and manifest what I've been hoping and dreaming about. So what's the dream? I pick one. And now at the end of the month going into October, I'm going to run with that and I'm going to make it happen. So I suppose if you're in a situation where you, you have a day job, for instance, or let's say you're retired or you're a student, for you, Scorpio, in September, you may get a sense of, hey, I could do this on top of my existing job or I could do this um, in my free time when I'm not studying. And if you get that kind of notion, that's something that you can do on your own and it will feel very empowering and very healing because it's about you. It's about doing something that's genuinely important to you rather than doing something because your family want you to or you have to, to you know, meet your obligations. It's really a very personal process. I'm acting on something because it's important to me. So your ability to live in this very personal space isn't just something that isolates you. It's something that gives you real answers, which um, you can run with and really take a lot of action around in October. I'm just thinking if I, you know, was going to dream for a month and get all these wonderful ideas, I would make my environment as comfortable as possible. You know, I think it's much better to dream lying in a hammock than sitting in an office chair. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's what I get for you here in September. I hope you have a fabulous month. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. In my personal readings, I use astrology, the tarot, numerology, and my intuition. I combine all things, all those things to answer any questions you may have. If you've got questions around your spiritual development, your friendships, your career, your life purpose, your children, your finances, anything at all, please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. If To draw up your birth chart, I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, there's a process called chart rectification. Um, that's a process where you send me 10 or more life events, and I'm actually able to work out your time of birth manually, which is important because the chart changes every four minutes. If you'd like me to do that, or you have any questions at all, please do get in touch with me via the website. Have a wonderful month and I'll speak to you soon. All the best.